Hello again, this is the second video where we will go through questions 6 through 10 of the mock paper of the SMO Junior. Let's get right into it, but as usual, if you just happen to chance on this video and you have not yet tried the questions, feel free to look at it in the description below. Now, without further ado, question 6. Determine the number of 3 digit positive integers n such that the square root of 2n over 3 is a positive integer. Two things to note here. One is that question 6 is usually not very difficult. In the last video I mentioned that within the short answer questions, they go within order of difficulty and the MCQ, but not across. So sometimes question 6 is kind of the same difficulty as question 1. It is supposed to be pretty manageable. Now, the second thing is that for any of these problems, whenever there is a such that, well, something, it basically is trying to ask you, how do you satisfy a certain criteria? And you want to restate that criteria into the most convenient fashion possible. Now, square root 2n over 3 is a positive integer. It definitely means something. We just need to figure out what. And usually, we want it to be in the form of some equation. So for it to be in the form of an equation, we probably want to change is a positive integer into something like calling this x, and then we have an equation we can write down. Certainly, this is not the most convenient uh, form of an equation yet. Square root 2n over 3 equals to x doesn't really tell us exactly what kind of n to select. So we can square both sides and then multiply by 3, divide by 2 to get n is equal to 3 over 2x squared. I think this is pretty nice because it is quite obvious that since x is a positive integer, the only thing that will stop n from being a positive integer is the over 2. So we just need to select x to be an even number and try to make sure that we hit a 3 digit range. So what does a 3 digit range mean? Well, it means that between 100 to 999. So let's just write it like this. This should be between 100 and 999. And so 200 over 3. So multiply everything by 2 thirds. Now 200 over 3 is 66 and 2 thirds. So we can now say, well, I know what values of x will work. 8 squared is too small, so we must start with 10. And we continue until the closest even square number to 666, which you would see is actually 24 squared. Uh, 24 squared is uh, 576. 26 squared, the next even number is 676. So you do have a little bit of calculation to do here, but you know that it's going to be 20 something. So you find the closest one, and it goes from 10 to 24. The last thing to do is to ask yourself, how many are there? And the answer to that question is that we take the largest minus the smallest, divide by the common difference of 2, and then plus 1. So there are 8 of them. Now certainly you could have just listed out the square numbers, but there isn't really a need to list each individual square. We are more interested in what's the range. Next thing is question 7. Given that x is a positive real number, what is the minimum value of x to the power of 4 minus 20x squared plus 2022? 
For those of you who are taking the SMO Junior, admittedly, you haven't really seen that many ways in which you can find the minimum value of anything, frankly. So it is a good thing that you only really have a few small possibilities to check when you see minimum value. One could be just that there is some way to simplify it into a fixed value and so minimum is just a trick. But the next and more likely scenario is that when they ask for a minimum value, you want to complete the square. In case you are not so comfortable with something like x to the 4 and 20x squared because that's not usually what we do when we are completing the square. We can just do a substitution of a equals to x squared and that will cause this expression to look like a normal one. a squared minus 20a plus 20,22 and this is pretty easy to complete the square for. Okay, 20 divided by 2 is 10 so a minus 10 squared minus 100 plus 2,022 would be 1922. So this is already going to be your answer. The reason is that 1922 is the smallest when a equals to 10. And a equals to 10 means that x is the square root of 10. But remember, they didn't ask you for x. So all we are doing this for is to make sure that a can really be 10. This is good practice whenever you do a substitution, just to make sure that the original number can actually make this succeed. How do we know a can actually be 10? It's easy to answer here, so not too many problems with agreeing with that. So completing the square is one of the quintessential parts of SMO Junior because the number of uh, algebraic tools which you have to find a minimum value is relatively limited. So sometimes, no matter how strange it is, one of the things to consider is completing the square. Question 8. The positive integer n leaves a remainder of 3 when divided by 11, 5 when divided by 12, and 7 when divided by 13. What is the smallest possible value of n? Now, realize that when you see a bunch of conditions like this, remainder of 3 when divided by 11, that's the first one, 5 when divided by 12, that's the second, 7 when divided by 13, that's the third you have a couple of possible directions to go. One direction is just to do it directly, which is fine. And the other direction is to look for some nice pattern that will unify everything. Now both of those are possible, but for now I am just going to start by combining these together as nicely as possible. And then we'll see what else can be done a little later. Now I'm going to use modulo arithmetic to write these statements down. It is not strictly necessary for this question, but uh, it does make things, make things a little bit easier to write and to explain. And there will be questions later where you do really need modulo arithmetic. Sorry about the writing. So 5 modulo 12 and 7 modulo 13. So the way to do this directly, when I say directly, what do I mean? I mean that you just combine these together two at a time. How do you combine these together two at a time? Well, 3 modulo 11 and 5 modulo 12, you want to find something that satisfies both. So you just start listing out the possible numbers that satisfy the first statement until it satisfies the second. Or you start listing out the second statement until it satisfies the first, either or. So if you have 5 modulo 12, you can start by listing up 5 and then 5 plus 12 
and then plus 12 again, plus 12 again. You just keep listing until it satisfies 3 modulo 11. If you keep doing this, it will take a little while, but eventually it must always work because as you're writing this down, the value when divided by 11, the modulo 11 will keep changing. So you are going to get there eventually and yeah, 113 is where you're going to get there. Once we have this, it means that we have 113 that satisfies both of these, but 113 is not the only value because we can still add in 11 times 12. In other words, it tells us that it is 113 modulo 132. And we can add 132 until it satisfies 7 mod 13. At this juncture, if you don't want to keep on dividing by 13 over and over and over again, that is pretty understandable. But what you could then observe is that every time when you add 132, you're increasing the remainder by 2 to the original one. And 113 divided by 13, the remainder is 9. So essentially, you are just going to keep on doing plus 2 to the remainder until it gives you 7. So we can see how long that takes, which is it goes 11, then 13, which will be the same as 0 because we're writing remainders, then 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 1, 3, 5, 7. Okay, so this took 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 steps of adding 132. So this is 113 plus, what's this equal to? 158. So answer is one six nine seven. Now if this seems to be a little bit boring or unpleasant or tedious, uh, that's because if you have a slightly more refined understanding of modular arithmetic, there was actually a way to do this much faster than this. Because if we pay attention to what we did earlier on in the first step, we could have reasons like the second step that when we are doing plus 12, that increases the remainder by 1 when dividing by 11 because 12 is 1 more than 11. But we can, when doing modular arithmetic, also go down. So we could go down from 5 and we do 5 minus 12, which is negative 7. And then negative 7 minus 12 is negative 19. And we know that when we go down by 12, we are reducing the value mod 11 by 1. So two steps later, we indeed get something that is congruent to 3 modulo 11. Negative 19 is congruent to 3 modulo 11 because the difference is 22, which is divisible by 11. So it means that you could actually also have gotten negative 19 here. And negative 19 also is going to be congruent to 7 mod 13. And so really, your conclusion from all of this could also have been n is congruent to negative 19 modulo 11. 12 and 13 and so it would be congruent to negative 19 modulo the LCM. The LCM of 11, 12 and 13 is just 11 times 12 times 13 which is 1716 and so the smallest value in that case would have been 1716 minus 19 
which gives the same answer with a little bit less effort. Now I say less effort if you were familiar with modular arithmetic. And this is the nature of a lot of questions in the SMO. If you are aware of more tools, you can do it more easily. But just because you weren't aware of it doesn't make it impossible, it's just that you need to stomach a little bit more manual work. And something like this question is such that the manual work is just doing addition. So it's not a lot of fun, but it still can be done. Okay, question nine. How many ordered quadruples of distinct positive integers A, B, C, D satisfy A, B, C, D are all between 1 and 20 and A times B times C minus D is equal to 1? Take note that it says distinct positive integers um, and ordered quadruples doesn't mean they are ascending or descending order. It just means that order matters. So something like if you did 1, 2, 3, 5 and you did 3, 2, 1, 5, that would be considered as a different quadruple, a different ordered quadruple, I should say. And so that's what this is trying to specify. The crux of this question is to understand exactly is so restrictive about a times b times c minus d equals to 1. Like, how am I supposed to know where to look? Now if we think about this though, this is saying that a times b times c is only slightly bigger than d. And we know that when you multiply three numbers together, it's usually going to be pretty big, right? It is 1 times, sorry, it's three numbers versus one number. And you're saying the difference is 1. That doesn't happen a lot. In fact, if we even just do something like 2 times 3 times 4, that's already too big because 2 times 3 times 4 is 6 times 4, which is 24. And that's too big because d cannot be 23. This is already too big. And so it means that one of them needs to be 1. And we can just go through the possibilities now of what a times b times c could be. Right? It could be 1 times 2 times 3, 1 times 2 times 4, all the way to 1 times 2 times 10. And each time d will just take the number underneath it, which is not a problem. You can also have something like 1 times 3 times 4, um, 1 times 3 times 5, 1 times 3 times 6, 1 times 3 times 7, it can go up to 21 because d would then be 20. And 1 times 4 times 5, and basically that's it. Okay. d would be the value that is 1 less than this. We don't really need to write them all down. As long as the thing on the left is at most 21, the thing on the right will be at most 20. And it is pretty easy to see from whatever we've written here that our number is not going to overlap with any of these down here because d is going to be much bigger than all three numbers multiplied together in isolation. Right? For example, if you have 1 times 3 times 5, d is 14, so d is going to be much bigger than 1, 3, and 5. Now, how many are there down here? 3 to 10, there are 8 numbers. Um, here there are 5, you can see. So there are 13 choices of three numbers. But remember that because they are ordered, so if we rearrange A, B, and C, that will give you a different possibility. As I mentioned earlier, something like 1, 2, 3, 5, and 3, 2, 1, 5 would be considered different. Now in all, each of these will have three factorial ways of being arranged, which is equal to 6. So 13 times 6 is 78, and that's the number of quadruples which we get. Lastly, we have question 10. What is the sum of the digits of 99999, uh, 2022 of them, times 2022? Now we know that we can do things like divisibility tests for 
something about the sum of the digits. As we saw in an earlier problem, we can use that to find out some information. But the question did ask us basically to say what, what exactly is the sum of the digits. And that means we can't really avoid it. We just need to find out what this is equal to. But 9999999 is very, very specifically chosen because multiplying by it is not too difficult. Especially if you rewrite this as just being 10 to the power of 2022 minus 1. Because if we open this up, you get 2022 followed by 2022 zeros. minus 2022. So if you do the subtraction, you'll just keep on borrowing and borrowing and borrowing for a really long time. You keep getting 9, 9, 9, 9, 9 all the way to the last time when you will have basically 10,000 minus this. And 10,000 minus this is 7, 9, 7, 8. Now clearly, if we want to find out how many nines, this is not very difficult because the number of digits has not changed. So the 20, 22 zeros at the back, four of them have become 7978. Down here, you are left with 2018 nines. Now, rather conveniently, uh, if we look at the rest of them, you can also pair them up to sum to nine. 2 plus 7, 0 plus 9, and 1 plus 8. So actually, your answer is just 2018 nines and then these 4 nines. So it is 2022 times 9, rather humorously enough, which is equal to 18,198. Turns out that something like this will also be true if you replaced uh, 2022 by any other, say, four-digit number. If you did, let's say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 9 times 1, 2, 3, 4, you will also get the answer of the sum of digits to be 1, 2, 3, 4 times 9. So this is kind of a nice pattern, although you didn't really need to solve this by pattern observation since that wouldn't help. Just doing it directly does the trick this time. Alright, so that's all that we have up to question 10. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions and please do subscribe if you haven't already to continue supporting this channel. So thanks everyone and I'll see you in the next video.